he was running for mayor, right? Finally, someone who could actually make a difference in this place. This game got me feeling things, dude. Really good things. Mirror's Edge was created by DICE and published by EA. Ew, EA, I know. Um, DICE had been known for the Battlefield games and Mirror's Edge was their attempt at something fresh and I'd say they wildly succeeded. If you don't know what Mirror's Edge is, it follows Faith Connors, the sexiest bitch to ever serve cunt at high velocities. She's a courier who delivers messages and avoids government surveillance in doing so. Her purpose is spreading information to prevent an even more controlling government. Uh, I hope you'll forgive me, I don't remember much about the story, and despite revisiting the game, I'm not gonna focus much on it. It was never what was truly important to me about the game. Story is delivered through 3D in-game cutscenes in 2D animated segments, probably to save on money on those crazy good 3D animations. It was outsourced and heavily stylized. It's not bad, but it feels lacking in quality when you compare it to the rest of the game. Right before we get into gameplay, I wanted to talk about the visuals and sound because it adds a hell of a lot to it. Is the ambient sound of wind blowing through the city, cars driving by, planes taking off, lending itself to a true-to-life city. A new lighting solution was also created here to give the light a softer feel. It really helps the outside segments feel more natural. It's not bombastic or over-the-top in its presentation, it's matter-of-fact. It's minimal. The motion-captured animations also really add to the realistic feeling. The models themselves have dated ever so slightly when you get up close to them. Fan of wrestling Ooh, why is he so sleazy looking? Something about him. To handle his security. Travis Burfield used to go by the name Why are you talking Rope like a fucking Is this theater going kid? Roper? Well, he's really just a thug who got Oh my god, stop! Stop it! <laughs> but honestly, it barely matters when you're actually in the gameplay. The visual experience holds up with modern releases today unless you're looking for crazy particle effects exploding off your character every second. The setting is white and almost sterile. A huge city with very few colors which are usually used to highlight advertisements. The city, in actuality, isn't that big, but the fact that you're running through buildings, smashing through doors, climbing through vents, makes the world feel gigantic. Like I have the feeling that if I were to walk out of bounds, it would go on forever. It feels so deliberate. Your first playthrough of the game will include runner vision, which colors small landmarks red to indicate where to go. I don't need to say it, you already see it, the game is somewhat devoid of people. The actual hustle and bustle of the city is taking place on the ground far below you. You meet very few characters and the game feels kind of isolated in that way. The oppressive government in the game is reflected in the standardized and clean architecture, and this serves to draw your attention further onto the gameplay which is a plus for me. That emptiness makes exploration and finding little easter eggs all the more sweeter. A lot of the levels in this game have you running away from authority trying to gun you down, but you're never in as much danger as you seem. The stray bullets never catch you if you're doing really well, but it always makes you feel like you're barely escaping with bullets ricocheting off the area around you. It's really fucking cool, it feels like an action movie. There are these really close encounters that require you to take enemies head on, disarming them, or finding a way around them. Combat is not crazy fun in my opinion, but it gets the job done. Because they have guns and you don't, it really makes your character feel vulnerable. If you're in a closed off room, law enforcement will try to force their way in while you figure out a way to escape. If you're figuring out where to go for the first time, it makes things feel really stressful. In the moments where you're not being chased, you're able to treat these like proper puzzle segments, using your ability to examine the layout of the rooms and predict where you'll be with the skills you've been using all along. It's pretty damn good. As you would guess, in a game about parkour, movement is the backbone of the game. It's smooth and satisfying. Faith's arms come up far enough for the player to see while she runs and pants for air. All actions flow cleanly into each other. I want to go back and talk about sound effects when talking about movement because Faith's shoes scratching concrete, her hands shifting weight away from the metal bar she swings on, running on a catwalk. Ooh, I love that shit. It feels so good. When I fall in this game, I feel like I should be fucking dead. Listen to this. Jesus Christ, Jesus, Jesus and rise. That combined with the slight warping effect around Faith as she's running and moving, all the animations and camera movements used to portray weight and every action, all of these elements are essential to creating the experience Mirror's Edge provides. It's simple, but it's, it's so good. It's still possible to make incredibly personal experience in third person games, but you lose that oneness with the character. There's a reason why a lot of horror games place you in first person. Mirror's Edge has been near the top of the most immersive games for a very very long time and has only recently begun to feel obsolete in that respect with groundbreaking camera and lighting techniques being implemented by Unrecord. It's crazy that the game has looked and flowed this well from 2009. I think this was also the first time I ever experienced flow state for an extended period of time. 
I had games I enjoyed, but I never did feel the satisfaction that this brought in the gameplay alone. The point where competency meets challenge. Ideally, people experience this in a place of work if they're satisfied with their job. The point of a challenge also keeps moving because the more you play, the more the challenge becomes improving your flow, finishing a level deathless, speed running the game, working towards your perfect run. The value of continuing to play was intrinsic. It was kind of like therapy to me. A time of day for me to keep my hands busy and reflect on my thoughts. I'm not sure if this game will be relaxing for everyone, but if you haven't played it, then you owe it to yourself to give it a try when it goes on sale for like 3 US dollars. For what Mirror's Edge is trying to be, a first person, speedrunner, action platformer, it's close to perfect. I'm Frogwater, thanks for watching. Uh, I realize that this is a lot shorter than usual, and there's a lot less jokes, but there's not much to joke about. I mean, it's just a good ass game. Um, I hope you enjoyed hearing my thoughts anyway. I'll see you later.